Thanks be to God. So you may have heard that there's a big holiday coming up on Thursday called Thanksgiving. And I'm curious, take a second, and when I say the word Thanksgiving, let something pop into your mind, a word or an image or a story. You got it? Now, for some people, Thanksgiving makes them think of big old frozen turkeys that they may or may not have bought yet from the grocery store. For some people, it's plane tickets. For some people, it's a table full of family and friends. For some people, it's parades in New York City. For some people, it's bargain hunting at Macy's. There's all kinds of images that we have of Thanksgiving, depending on how it's been lived out in our family and in our culture. But in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I thought we would start with a little bit of Thanksgiving trivia this morning. Do you know, by any chance, what year Thanksgiving was established as a national holiday here in the United States? Anybody get a guess? 39? Any other guesses? 1620, a little early. <laughs> Though I appreciate the nod to the pilgrims. The answer is 1863 by President Abraham Lincoln. There were lots of little Thanksgivings before then, but until then, Thanksgiving was not a national American holiday. And when President Lincoln issued his Thanksgiving proclamation in the middle of the Civil War, he wrote this. He proclaimed a day entreating all Americans to ask God, quote, to commend to God's tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife and to heal the wounds of our nation. Thanksgiving, according to President Lincoln, was to be pray about praying for widows and orphans and mourners and sufferers and to pray for the healing of a nation. It's a pretty far cry from frozen turkeys and department store sales. The Bible is full of images of thanksgiving as well. The ancient Hebrews may not have known about Abraham Lincoln or turkeys for that matter, but in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy, there's lots of images of harvest festivals at which the people are called to give thanks to God. The festival of weeks, for example, was to be celebrated when the grain harvest was complete, usually in June, with, as Deuteronomy says, a free will offering in proportion to the blessing you have received from the Lord your God. Now, you and I in Bothell this morning, at least most of us, are not out in the fields harvesting grain every day anymore. But this tradition of the harvest festival remains in our culture in the form of thanksgiving. The rules about exactly how much grain to bring in and how to harvest it and what package to bring to the temple don't really apply to our situation as much anymore. But this morning I want to suggest to you that there are three instructions in this scripture from Deuteronomy that apply to us and our thanksgiving even here in the suburbs of the United States. These three directions are easy to remember, but they're kind of a downer. In fact, they're three downers. Each one of them involves the word down. They are set it down, bow down, and my favorite, party down. But before we get too down, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time and this place and for your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts this morning, God, be acceptable in your sight. You who is our strength, you who saves, you who is our song. Amen. The final words of the scripture that Dick read this morning are these. You shall set down the first fruit before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, you shall celebrate with all the bounty the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. 
So the first downer in this passage is set it down. In the scripture, the Israelites are commanded to bring the first fruits of all of the ground and to set them down before God as an offering of thankfulness for all that God has given them. This expression, first fruits, has made its way into Christian tradition as well and for good reason. Offering the first fruits of the harvest is one of the ways that the people of Israel practice giving God their best, giving to God before they take for themselves. So often in our culture, we give away things, but we give away things that we can't use anymore. We give away our hand-me-downs or stuff that's basically already all worn out. This idea of first fruits is a guard against that impulse. What would it look like if when we gave, we gave to God and neighbor first, not what was left over after we've taken what we want? What would it look like if before we received blessings into our lives, we set them down, reminding ourselves that everything we have belongs to God? What would it look like if we did that? To receive God's grace more fully into our hearts, we are called to set things down to give them back to God. Set it down. The second downer from this passage this morning after set it down is bow down. As the Israelites present their offering, they're instructed, bow down before the Lord your God. To bow down then as now is a sign of great reverence a way of demonstrating respect, a way of acknowledging the holiness and the sacredness in something that you see. In some Christian traditions, people still bow down when they see the communion table or the cross. In some Christian traditions, people even bow down before one another, acknowledging that when we look at each other's faces, we can see the face of God. In some Christian traditions, people will physically bow down to pray. Some people will bow their heads to pray. And other people, if they don't bow with their bodies, will bow to God in their hearts. In this passage from Deuteronomy, the Israelites are instructed to physically bow down before God in the temple, but they are also invited to bow down in their hearts as they remember what God has done. When they come together in this passage to celebrate God's abundance, the celebration is not complete until somebody retells the story of what God has done for them as a people. The Israelites are invited to bow down to the memory of how God has worked through the lives of their ancestors. They're invited to retell the story saying these words. In Deuteronomy it says, a wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien few in number and he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt and brought us into this place. How has God been at work in the lives who have gone before you? Who in your life has endured great hardship so that God might bring you into this place? When you think of those people 
this Thanksgiving, when you remember on whose shoulders you now stand, bow down. If not in your body, then in your heart. Set it down. Bow down. And the third one, my favorite, is party down. The last part of the scripture this morning says, you, together with the Levites and all of the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty the Lord your God has given to you and your house. One of the ways we are invited to honor God, even at church, but other places too, one of the ways we are invited to honor God is to celebrate with all of the bounty, to throw a knockdown, drag out, ginormous party with everything we have. And that's not all. Do you remember Abraham Lincoln's proclamation, his urging to pray for the widows and the orphans and the mourners and the sufferers? In scripture, those folks are not just supposed to be on our hearts, they are supposed to be at our tables, at God's table. For if we set down our abundance and bow down before God, we cannot help but set down our abundance and bow down before our neighbors as well, even the aliens or immigrants or sojourners or strangers who live among us in our communities. So how, this Thanksgiving, is God inviting you to party down? Who does God want you to invite to the party? And in the words of Abraham Lincoln, how are you being invited to heal the wounds of a nation this Thanksgiving? My prayer for you this Thanksgiving is this. Whatever it is that you are carrying, may you set it down. Wherever it is that you see the face of God, may you bow down. And whenever it is that you have blessings in your life that cry out to be shared, may you party down. And as you do, May you and the widow and the orphan and the wounded and the strangers, may all of us be blessed. Amen.